Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 33, bringing you yet another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a match between Gota and El Torero. Sure, you're all excited because Gota is involved, or either that or you're groaning because you figure it's a foregone conclusion. Either way, we're going to start. It's going to be an Adamantine Mountain, and it is. Should we start with the game first? Gota, or sorry, El Torero going for a Cloakybot Factory, Gota going for a Jump Bot Factory because. Yeah, he tends to do crazy things. I mean, admittedly, there's a 500 LO difference, so he's probably going to be handicapping himself a little bit. But jump bots aren't that huge of a handicap. I mean, they are a bit tricky to use, very micro-heavy, but I wouldn't be going, oh yeah, he's handicapping, he's handicapping himself, what a nice guy, necessarily. I mean, he does have a tendency to play unusual factors, especially when he has an advantage in a matchup, or just in general. But this is... Well, jump bots have been reworked recently, so I'm actually curious to see what they do. They modified it. The moderator is now more expensive, heavier. They... I think they tweaked a couple of the other units slightly as well. Moderators are the big ones that they changed. But right now, starting with pyros and puppies. No metal on the map for reclaim for the puppies, though. Puppies do need the metal to reproduce, but they don't have any right now. It'll all have to come from Rex. And since there are no Rex in the map right now, that will be a moot point. El Torero is building up his economy normally. Both players building up fairly normally, though... It looks like... Well... Goda's commander... Let's see, he's a recon commander. El Torero is also a recon commander. Both of them going for jump comms. Because that's... Jump comm is the new meta. Yeah, well... That actually is true, because the mobility. As you can see, Goda actually is taking advantage of that to have a bit more metal. Though on top of that, he... Wait, how is he getting more metal? He only has four... Is he... No, he hasn't morphed. He has four from his commander. He has another eight from his... Metal extraction. Unless one of these metal... Oh, I see, that's why. Main base metal extractors are much more valuable. That would explain it. And El Torero only has his main base three. He doesn't have any additional extractors. Gota, on the other hand, is expanding along the right side of the map, and that's not surprising. Adamantine Mountain, you often get just... Along the right, along the left. Along the center is not really that interesting. There's no metal there, so units will often go along the center because it's the shortest path. But there's nothing except for the geothermals of interest. And now is not quite the geothermal stage of the game. And a pyro... Oh, well, now the pyro actually didn't actually do much. Oops. Yeah, pyro failed in there. Early pyro attack didn't quite succeed in where it was supposed to succeed. Another pyro is going to come in and... Looks like El Torero is well prepared to deal with this. He did have ticks. Okay, that's what I thought. I heard a tick go off. That's what got rid of the pyro. So, Jujitsu's use of ticks is what is needed to get rid of pyros. That or Rocco's, but no Rocco's in play yet. El Torero is trying to harass a bit himself, getting some glaze down to the south side of the map. And Goda is fully aware of this. Checking his radar. Oh! No, he must have just seen it coming or guessed it coming. El Torero, on the other hand, does have radar straight into the center of the map. And does he have anything... No, he has no knowledge of that. Pyro went back home, I don't think. Probably probably to guess as much. I would be surprised if he was surprised by this. And Jack's coming in as well, so it looks like main assault is going to be the goal for Goda right now. He's getting half a dozen Pyros as well. This Pyro here is going to be able to get rid of the Glaives. No problem. The Glaives trying to move in, but they are all going to burn to death. Except maybe one. Nope, they're all going to burn. All of them going to burn. Oh no, actually one did survive. So that is still a pretty big blow. That was a free three kills. Free three glaive kills for Gota there. For that pyro. Zeus is coming up instead. Also a good counter. Actually, probably a good general factory approach because the Jacks, I mean, think about it. They are tough units. Stopping them outright is probably easier than killing them. El Torero, however, is... Let's see, Light Particle Beam and Repair System for Gota... And El Torero still hasn't upgraded his commander yet. He is focused entirely on, his on well, not economy, on stack defenses. That's the big thing. The economy is not as big of a deal for him, but the stack defenses certainly are. He does have all of his power economy on the ground. Goda has a lot of his power of economy invested in his commander. About half of his power economy is in his command. No, never mind. No, we still. So a third of his power economy is in his commander. Actually, it's almost half. 19 power. Eight of that being at his commander. Losing his commander would present a bottleneck. Anyway, El Torero is... Well, he's keeping us out of the map. He has expanded forward. He's going to probably consolidate, get rid of these... Well, get these metal extractors to himself within the next three or four minutes, I would imagine. 
Needs to push God out though because obviously God's interference at the moment would be a bit of a problem. And God's commander gonna get stunned pretty soon. Moving out of the way, trying to avoid these Zeus's while the Zeus's get distracted by the Pyros and Jax. Pyros go down quickly, but one of the Zeus's follows suit. The Jack, actually, you know what? Never mind. I forgot. EMP is based entirely on the health of the unit in question, so even with a Zeus, it's not going to matter. The Jack is just going to take a lot of punishment. The Zeus can only really do so much. That being said, the Zeus does a lot for getting rid of Pyros. And now the Jack has been damaged enough that Paralysis can take hold. Go to move his commander in and... Well... Elturo's commander is off to the side, so Gota's commander is the only one actually at risk in this fight. These two Zeus's are going to be able to stun it out, and stunned out as it jumps away, successfully jumping away, but so do the Pyros, and Gota is forced to retreat, taking out a... no metal extractors and leaving a ton of metal on El Torero's doorstep. I'm sure he appreciates the donation. That That is usually how that goes. That being said... Gota is going to try to pick a fight further off to the east where El Torero's commander is and where he's going to be a bit less likely to have reclaim power. Although admittedly, he might still do so. In fact, if he loses the... Well, he's losing the power... Oh, he's losing some of the defensive power along the side of the map. That isn't a good thing. Pyro's got those for free. I'm just thinking the commander does still have the ability to reclaim, but he doesn't have the ability to reclaim those pyros. So he ultimately lost resources at the moment. El Torero still has an economic lead though. 30 to 22. Gota is moving to expand. He does have Worker off to the southwest side of the map. And no further workers being built. He has one assisting the factory. No surprises there. The other one, that's it. Those are all the workers he has. Those two. And Gota's commander is once again under threat by the Zeus's, but enough Pyros to deal with the Zeus's. Now, admittedly, the Zeus's are dealing with the Pyros quickly enough, but still, 350 metal compared to... Well, compared to 250, or 220. Yeah, it's about even for cost. But a tick going to try to turn the tables here. If El Torero can place that right, he could get rid of all the Pyros in one go. Just stun them all out before they jump and then kill them all for free. That being said, I don't think he's going to plan on doing that. That would be a little bit too hasty. Putting the tick in place to defend, assuming the Pyros attack, that's a good idea. And I think he's expecting the Pyros and Goda's commander to attack through the center. Actually, no, I was going to say unsafe assumption. He has a tick as well over here in the northwest side of the top center section. That is important because that means that he is going to be able to stop a direct assault as well. He needs to be able to do that because, of course, direct assault is going to be more likely the way Goda has been playing. That's not at all. That would be a thing he'd do. And El Torero harassing along the southeast side as well as the north. Actually, pushing along the northwest. Well, on the west side. Tagging along the southeast side. The defenders are a bit of a pain, but it's... He's distracting Gota a little bit. Not a whole lot, but he does have his glaives in place. He can get rid of this area right here. He is dealing with this Freaker, actually getting rid of the Freaker. And Gota going for the attack. This tick, it's the important thing here. It needs to not get spotted. It needs to not die. And it is on hold fire. That is good. It's not in hold position, though, but it is on hold fire. Should only go off when it needs to. And the Zeus's are setting up as well for defense. Moderator coming down here. This is going to be possibly a big deal. It does have a disruptor gun now, which means that it is able to slow heavily and damage at the same time. Like I said, moderator's weight was increased considerably. Each individual moderator, much more powerful, but as a whole, not so much. And down goes the tick just on the moderator. The rest of the pyros have free reign inside. This is huge. This tick needs to go back. This is the only chance that... Well, not the only chance, but El Toro, this is a big chance he has right here that he's not taking advantage of. Move this tick in. Get rid of the pyros. That will... That'll turn this battle around nicely, and he is doing exactly that. And stunning the commander and one of the pyros, not the best way to go with this, but at least he puts the commander and one of the pyros out of the way, slightly tipping the battle, but still really tough and loses a lot of units. More than he should have. I mean, this tick here, that was the big thing. If that tick did not get preemptively killed, it would have been able to take out all the pyros. The commander would have gone down. I mean, Goda's commander has been here this entire time. He's actually not got any more power, or very little power infrastructure on top of that. Placeholder holding El Torero's commander. Okay, El Torero is calm pushing as well. It's not working out too well at all. Getting rid of the commander for free once again. Goda's been taking a lot of engagements for free. These pyros have just been destroying everything. I mean, the commander here, they destroy for free. The metal strategy has been destroyed for free. This battle here, not for free, but it's still a great advantage to Goda. 
So El Torero is falling behind. He lost a lot of his economy there. Actually, it looks like he did. I think he was just reclaiming. That's where the economy advantage came in. But still, reclaim is a very important part of the game. And he is reclaiming near his base. He did lose a metal extractor to the attack, but I'm a bit surprised he hasn't built more metal extractors here. To send one of his constructors over here, build more metal extractors. Sure, they're getting attacked, but that's what Zero K is about, is building and rebuilding. Now, Gota, on the other hand, his commander cannot quite jump yet. It is going to be able to get rid of this laser tower, but... Losing a lot of its health in the process. Does have an auto repair system on it, though. That is the one thing. It does not die easily, but it may die here. See if it does. I think... I think it will. It's jumping away, trying to hold behind the Lotuses, and the Pyro will... Pyro and Lotuses combined will stop any attacks from coming in and destroying Gota's commander. And it has completed a morph to level 2 with two advanced targeting systems to increase its range. I find it very interesting. Admittedly, it's Gota, so Gota just plays anything. I do find it interesting, however, that there's a lot of... A lot of different comm builds than there used to be with the comm... I'm kind of... I'm glad of that somewhat. I mean, there's obviously the risk of build or... or not build or so much, but commander selection poker. That is, of course, a bit of a challenge, but I don't think the commanders at this point have shown themselves to be overpowered on their own. It seems like the choice is kind of important to your strategy and you want to play into it, but it doesn't seem like the game is won or lost based on commander choice. Except maybe the support comm. The support comm for a while didn't seem to actually do much. The current support comm may have an okay position just because of the build power increase, but it doesn't have the economic advantage it had before. Which, of course, means that's not the only thing you have available to you. And nice use of placeholders as well. I mean, he's been using these quite well earlier. It's a fairly new jump bot unit, so for those of you who haven't followed Zero K in a while, it launches black holes, and those suck everything in the area into it with a fancy little particle effect. That needs a bit of depth blending, but fancy little particle effect. All the units nearby are just stuck there. Can't move. Very useful for getting rid of specific units you want to get rid of. And got it. Wow, he's turning the Recon Com into a battle commander on its own. This is. Well, El Torero still has a lot of map control. He's not taking full advantage of it, though. He's not built in here. And like I said, I can see because he's probably concerned about getting attacked. It's just that it's still economy he could have in the meantime. I mean, as long as it lasts more than like half a minute, it's paid for itself. Nice two metal per second. 75 metal to build a whole extractor. Give it 32 seconds or so. Oh no, 37 seconds. And that's it. Done. You paid for itself. And... Oh. Well, looks like there's damage being done through an El Torero's line here. He is containing Gota somewhat. Like I said, not taking full advantage of it, not building as much as he can, but still he is containing Gota somewhat. Metal Extractor's here as well, like all along here. I mean, okay, these are... Oh, I see, that's why. Okay, my mistake. I apologize. Criticizing El Torero for doing something that's not useful. Because these are one metal each. So that would actually be a little over a minute for them to pay for themselves. Okay, I can totally understand now why he went for what he did. That makes perfect sense. Oops. And, oh, that, okay, concussion shot is what we're seeing. Oh, yeah, God is going for this massively. Never even seen that D-gun before. I, like, no one ever morphs the commander level. This is the first time, I, like, this whole series of games has been... Com massive comm morph after massive comm morph. And this one's no exception with comm pushes as well. Admittedly, recon on both sides. But still. Admittedly, this is the one time it's not been a desperation move. In the last couple games, the comm push was a desperation move at the last minute. Crab as well being set up to contain this. I mean. Oh, morph into a crab. Nice. Morph one of the Zeus's into a crab. So he does have a surprise crab. That is, as the chat pointed out, the thing happening right now. It's going to be interesting, though, because crabs are... Oh. Sorry. Crabs... Well, are not a bad choice here, actually. They tank well when they're stationary. They have really powerful attack. A lot of splash damage. It's a little bit hard for Gota's commander to avoid them. Gota's commander, however, is now level 5 with very fast movement. Like, upgrades to movement, massive health, like, 3,500, no, 3,500 cost of what his cost is, 4,000 health. So not the toughest commander, of course, can be beaten in that way, but still, a lot of snipers in place to deal with it. Gota has been focusing everything into the person of his commander, building jump bots as well, but it looks like El Torero is still expanding pretty well. The contained break is occurring, Gota is 
trying to break this. The snipers and Zeus, however, are doing a great job stopping the pyros. They need to somewhat retreat, getting onto the hill to avoid damage. And El Torero has been containing Gota quite successfully this entire game. Now, I mean, Gota is taking advantage of this, building up these metal extractors here. And honestly, El Torero probably should have built the metal extractors, all things considered. I mean, yeah, they're one metal each, and it takes a while for them to pay off, but it's still that much more income. Still extra income, and admittedly, it's stuff he's not all spending, but still. He is... He's... Doing great. El Torero is actually really holding off. I mean, El Tor It just... Gota is getting back in economy, because he is taking these small metal extractors. And El Torero... I can see why he's been avoiding them, but that's all he has left to take. So I'm kind of surprised he hasn't gone for that. Now, the one thing is that he is going to need... Oh, interesting. He has a crab. Oh! <laughs> Chat pointing out that crab can morph into a scorpion and a cannibal. Both both of them are... Well... Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Someone, is, someone in the chat kind of mentioning some stuff. Anyway. Interesting choice. I don't know if I agree with the scorpion over the crab, though the scorpion does have great paralysis ability. I mean, one of its basic weapons is basically a lightning tail. Stuns everything it stings, for lack of a better term. And point out that El Toro is harassing around the side while keeping the contain going. Though admittedly, the contain has been weakened significantly. That break did not, or a break attempt did not finish it off, but it did a lot of damage. And it looks like El Torero is, well, not getting attacked quite yet. He is, however, harassing nicely, getting rid of this particular point. He should just move in. He really, I think, should just move in. This pyro is a bit of a threat. Actually, no. Now it's too late, but I mean, originally, just... And once he got rid of that, not even bother with the power plants, just go around and get in and try to deal with the stuff in the main base. Like, just try to harass it a bit. Or actually, even better, this center section is open. This section is nearly open. That, actually, this section is too close to the commander. That would be too easily defended. But the rest is fairly open, and puppies coming in, taking care of the wreckage, duplicating... Okay, this many puppies, this should probably break it. If nothing else, this will probably seal the containment break. How many puppies are there, anyway? Nearly two dozen puppies, and each of them individually does... How much damage does it do? Each of them does 410 damage. So that's a good 8,000 damage right there. I think the crab is the only thing that could survive that. A lot of ticks as well, but Gota is... He's going for a contain break along a different angle, just going along the center of the map and taking as much direction as he can, getting more puppies, and probably going to move in. From here, El Torero completely aware of this likelihood. Defending with Glaze along the side as well, just in case a harassment along the edge comes in rather than a main base attack. Which I'm a bit surprised, well, okay, I'm not entirely surprised Gota isn't doing, but... No, never mind, what am I saying? Gota is doing that right now. At the same time, El Torero is going for a massive harassment attack of his own with a bunch of Glaives. Pyros are in place to defend, and I'm guessing this one will be jumping up the hill to deal with these Glaives. No, it won't have to. The Glaives are coming to them. Now, the Glaives, actually in number, the Glaives are numerous enough, they should be able to get rid of the Pyros, get rid of the Mexes. Looks like it's just going to be a push straight in the middle of the base, but losing a lot of Glaives. That's what I was thinking, he should have gone over the hill. It takes a bit longer, but it's going to be more survivable, and that is, that's a lot of Glaives. This crab's still in position for defending, but moving out, trying to push forward a bit, and El Torero moving in with the Zeus's to take care of as much of Gota's economy as he can. Go to trying to counter harass, but not quite able to do so. Too much in the way of defensive structures. And I think Gota's just going to go straight for a direct attack. Not even going to bother trying to defeat this. Probably just going to push in. But we'll see. Actually, he's running out of puppies in great numbers. I think. Oh, Gota's been. I mean, Gota has been kept kind of on the back foot this entire game. He's actually been pushed back a lot this game. And. Crab still in place. I mean, his biggest asset has been this commander. If that commander died at any point earlier in the game, I think Gota would have lost. But that commander, living long enough to get to level 5 in a game like this, I mean, this has been a pretty good back and forth game, not a joke game at all. And that crab has stayed alive. Sorry, that crab has stayed alive, of course, but Gota's commander has stayed alive. Very impressive there. More Zeus is, however, getting through this. One of them getting place held, but the rest of them going down to the Pyrus. Way too many pyros. 20 pyros right... Actually, 20, 17 pyros right here. 
able to get rid of the half dozen Zeus's at almost no cost. Some of them were destroyed, but not a whole lot. I think three or four of them were killed. And a bunch of Glaives to try to follow this up. And actually a lot of weakened Pyros, many of them will die in the process. Many of them will kill Glaives in the process of dying, of course, but a lot of them will in fact die in the process. And I think that's not going to break it. That is certainly not going to break it. Godot still has a lot to deal with here. The Crab is moving through. It's still alive. It's nearly dead, actually. It's done a lot of damage, though. It's definitely paid for itself many times over. But trying to get rid of Godot's commander, but it's not going to be enough. Not a commander like this. Not a commander with this much range, this much speed, this much health. 4,000, not a huge amount, but still. Hard to get through in one go. Now, that being said, El Torero did manage to reestablish this side of the map somewhat. He is building another laser tower, trying to push forward with buildings. The east side of the map has been pretty much undamaged this entire time. Go to sort of try to go for it, but not much. And El Torero now taking the center. And El Torero is poised to win this game. He just needs to consolidate, get himself a good army, build himself up. I mean, get himself an even bigger army. Admittedly, he's got a pretty good army as it is. Just build himself up, taking care of even more of Gota's economy. Nice periphery harassment. Nice thing to do there. Getting rid of more of it is, well, okay, these are not particularly valuable mechs, but still, every mech counts somewhat. When there are free kills like this, you might as well. Just nicely done there. Point this out, El Torero only sending one glaive to take care of that mechs. Very good sense of proportionality there. You only needed that one. The rest of them could be moved back to defend. Just thought I'd point that out because that is a very nice move. It's subtle, but it's a good thing to do because you can see that one glaive dies, but you know what? That was one glaive to get rid of one max. And I mentioned before that it's been an even trade, but it's really more in the favor of the attacker because there is still metal extractor uptime. And a metal extractor like this actually... Okay, maybe it's a bit more even. The metal extractor uptime is not particularly high. Goda probably lost about 10 metal. And a scorpion is being built! Or morphed, rather. The crab is morphing into the scorpion. How long is that going to take? It, oh, doesn't say. Well, judging by the looks of the raid, it's going to take about half a minute. We'll see how that goes. A sumo coming in, however. So, heavy units are what's coming in here. Sumo admittedly has been nerfed a lot since the last time it was a big thing. So, we'll see how that goes. Still a tough unit, 12,500 health, about the same as a crab when the crab is sitting down. Very important point. The crab takes one-third damage when it's sitting and not moving, but that's not all the time. So the sumo, extremely tough, short range though, all disruptor beams, and the jump. Because range is not particularly high. I think the Zeus is out range. Actually, the Zeus's have, what range do they have? 280 range compared to 320. No, the Zeus's do not outrange it. However, the Zeus's deal enough damage that it's probably... Well, okay, it's more against the Pyros. That's the big question. Getting rid of the Pyros as support. However, Scorpion is coming in. Here we have the Scorpion. A cloaked Strider with lightning gun, stunner, and particle beams. This is going to be pretty impressive, assuming it works out. We'll see, though. I should point out, no Zeus's are actually on the field except for this one right here. Or, sorry, two Zeus's on the field. And one of them is fighting that Suma right now and not doing an especially good job. Actually, one of them is flying through the air, half, well, half of it's flying through the air. Anyway, the Scorpion over might be able to get through here, try to get rid of the Sumo. See how that works, the Sumo does have his jump available, it is going to probably jump in. May jump on top of the Scorpion, I think Godin knows about that. But he is getting rid of this west side, he is breaking that contain again, and pretty even on economy, mind you. I mean, El Torero, he's been pushing a lot into his factory, that's true, he's been getting a lot of metal through his factories. But he hasn't actually been doing much else. I mean, he hasn't fact switched or anything. I don't know if he needs to. Admittedly, 10 shadows would get rid of this. No, 5 shadows would actually get rid of this recon com, no problem. And he has the resources to push them out. Not sure if it's the best idea. An air switch is a pretty big investment, but it's worth noting. I mean, losing that commander would be a blow for Gota. Not the biggest blow, no energy or anything like that. I mean, it wouldn't damage his economy too much, but it would damage his military pushes a lot. I mean, the Pyros go down to Zeus without too much issue. The Sumo is a problem, but the Sumos are also very expensive, and Pyros and Puppies are Gota's bread and butter. No surprise for a Jumpbot factory. And it looks like, at the same time, El Torero are preparing for a defense while sending a bunch of Glaze out to attack. Gota, I should point out, is not aware of this. Or No, he is. This Pyro has line of sight. 
I'm not sure if Godin noticed though, but the Pyro did have line of sight, and now the Glaze are coming in. Godin going back to defend once again! This is where Elsra has been buying a lot of time, has been going back to these Glaze and forcing Godin to just move back. He is moving forward with the Sumo, but that's somewhat out of position. He needs to jump away once again. So Godin not able to attack. Elsra doing very nice harassment jobs, not wasting any Glaze. Just dealing with the Mexus as best he can, and the real profit is Godin's retreat. That's what gives him the advantage here, is that he's just buying more and more time. Now, admittedly, what he's doing at that time, I'm not sure I agree with, but hey, getting Zeus's has worked out. So I can agree with that. Zeus's do a good job. I still think having five shadows would be a great thing to have. Just get rid of the commander. Just done. Like, actually, no, six shadows. Five shadows, if they hit simultaneously, would work. Six shadows would be able to take care of the fact that there are... Well, there is a higher health regen. There are... That's just okay. Our auto repair system, there's only one. There's only a single auto repair system. It's, it's just that it's a pain in the butt to deal with. Just the one is a problem. And it looks like God is just, he's poking. He wants to know what he can get into. Nice use of, okay, nice tick placement in case the pyros do retreat up here. It'll mostly just split the army. It's, I mean, it's possible to go up and deal with this, but it's still, it's, it's an issue. Now anyway, Altero. He's getting a lot of glaives. I mean, I understand he's going for the harassment, he's going for the raiding. I can see that, but I think this is kind of getting past the raiding stage in the game. I mean, we're past, the, we're into the try to find the way to win stage, which admittedly, like I said, he's been buying time by way of use of glaives, but he hasn't actually been really affecting any real problems for Goda at this point. I mean, he, he's going to try. He's going to try once again, sending all these glaives down here, possibly getting rid of the base, but I think Goda... How many powers has got to have? Well, all 24 of them are being sent over to deal with the Glaives, or at least push to deal with the Glaives. The Glaives retreating once again, and El Torero has been keeping Goda on his toes, but I really think that this would be the best time to set up an Air Factory and a bunch of Shadows to get rid of the Commander, and then to get rid of the Sumo. And at that point, it would just be a matter of cleaning up the rest of the Pyros, which we've seen El Torero knows how to do. And once that's done, it would be just... It'd be a simple matter to win. But no, that is not what is happening. Instead, Glaives are in fact coming down. The puppies are in place to stop. No, the Glaives are forming a line. They are not coming down. Posturing. That's all this is. El Torero is posturing. Or at least he's posturing on that side of the map. In the center of the map, he is starting to push in a bit. Trying to do what he can to get rid of Goda's commander. But like I said, this commander has been doing so much damage. It has... Okay, there's no stats on how much damage is actually done. But it has done a lot of damage. That commander has been alive a lot longer than a... Battle equipped recon com has any right to be. Missile silo coming in for Goda. Strider hub is coming in for El Torero, which looks like it's just being used for push. Okay, that makes no sense. El Torero does not have the resources to actually make this work. I figured we'd be making another either Scorpion or Ultimatum or something. I don't know. I did, no, no. Well, actually, maybe Ultimatum. Where's the Ultimatum? Wait, what? Oh, there it is. Yeah, Ultimatum. 2000 Metal. Not too bad. But that would still be a minute and a half. Still. Scorpion is coming in. Let's see what he can deal with. So pushing the warriors in, trying to get rid of Goda's commander. These warriors might be able to get rid of the pyro before they die. No, they do not. That sumo takes care of them, but the sniper... Well, the lead, well, the three snipers doing what they can. I'm not sure about all these... I really don't think all these glaives is wise. Probably should have been more Zeus's and more warriors. Definitely more Zeus's. If not an air switch. I, I know I harp on that. I harp on that because air switches have been shown to work against weak commanders like this. Or, or I should say, shadow... Large numbers of shadows do kill commanders like this, and with the economy El Torero has, that wouldn't take long. That'd be like a minute, and he'd have enough to deal with this. And there come the presumably Napalm Missiles! Indeed, the Napalm Missiles are coming in! And hitting a nice spot on the map. Unfortunately, nothing was there at the time. And Zeus is... This is a more important story here. Zeus is in the southwest side of the map, trying to push in, trying to finish this off. Gonna go for the sumo. The sumo goes to the jump. Gonna get rid of one of the Zeus's, or no, damaged slightly, but the Zeus moved out of the way in time. The rest of the Pyros for support coming in, and that sumo, while taking some damage, not nearly enough. The Pyros, however, are taking a lot of damage, but there's just too many. The Zeus's do not have splash damage. Doing what they can, but they do not have the ability to get rid of a lot of them at once. A bunch of Pyros here, and a bunch of Napalm missiles trying to deal with the Glaives as well. The Glaives are just going down to the Pyros. Glaives do not counter Pyros. That's the thing to bear in mind. Glaives lose in a straight-up fight against Pyros. And now El Torero has nothing. He has no army to defend with. He has this Scorpion, and that's pretty much it. And the Snipers. 
Snipers and Scorpions pretty much it. Godin knows this and he is going in for the kill. He's going to take revenge for everything that's happened this game so far. He's been held back the entire game by Eltsboro and he's not going to stand for it anymore. Has to get rid of this, but doesn't matter. Eltsboro throws in the towel, realizing he has nothing that he can do. At this person needs to at least try with the Scorpion, but there you have it. That was the game, a rather anticlimactic finish, but a very interesting game nonetheless. So that is that. Fun. But I think I'll do another match tonight. It's not too late. So stay tuned for that.